Yes, sir. Will you take tea substitute or coffee substitute? Tea for me, please. He's in there. That Gestapo fellow's there, too. There's a couple of stormtroopers in there. How the devil are we going to pass him with the word without that fellow spotting him? We've got to do it somehow. Yes. Of course, he, he might come out for a minute. I mean, most people do. We must act, Charters. It's no good hanging about on the off chance. Excuse me. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. That uh, steward. What about him? Well, he's bound to come back sometime to bring that order. By Jove, yes. How do we get to Munich? In about 30 minutes, sir. Thank you. All right? Yes. I put it underneath the donut. Good. What? Well, how do you know that for him? Well, I suddenly remembered that Dickie Randall always had donuts sent up to his room for afternoon tea. <laughs> Very clever of you, old man. Oh, better get along there, eh? Mm. All right. Oh, my lord. Well, what's up? Well, I'm, I'm wondering if it was donuts. I believe it is rock cakes. Have you made all arrangements to transport at Munich, Martin? Every arrangement, sir. Will there be more than one car? Almost certainly two. Let's see, that will make seven rather a car. I think in order to finish my talk with Herr Bermes, you had better take the second car. Very good, sir. I believe Herr Bomesh is really beginning to see that I am doing my best to help him. I'm sure he knows, sir. Yes, yes, Major. Your attitude has been most reasonable. You must remember it's only a few hours since Father was taken out of the room by force. Captain Marston was only obeying orders. Members of the Gestapo are frequently asked to perform duties which others find too objectionable. Some are objectionable. Others I find extremely satisfying. I often envy you your opportunities. Please, I am escorting the party. My dear Martin, it's my privilege. In fact, it is an order. Terrible. The way prices have gone up already. Excuse me. Yes, I, I'm Randall. How are you, old man? You remember me? Yes. This is Charters, an old friend of mine. How do you do? Well, what is it? Well, look here. We don't know what you're up to, of course. Never mind about that. But whatever it is, you appear to be on the spot. Tell him about it, Charters. Well, I was phoning Berlin about my golf clubs. By the way, I'm resigned to the fact I shall never see them again, Paul Dickens. Yes, we'll get on with it. Well, I was just coming to that. I was telephoning. I got on the other chap's line, you know, that Gestapo fellow. I overheard him saying they were sending a military escort to arrest you when you get to Munich. You see, you're rumbled. They know you're, you're not hurt, so. I can't tell you everything, there isn't time, but that I've got to get that old man and the girl out of this country at all costs. What? Oh, an official job. Are you two fellows game to help me? What, against Germany? I'll say we are after all they've done for us. What do you say, colleague? Absolutely, old man. Backs to the wall. Mm, I hope not. Is it, will you give me a little more room to think?
if there are any tea left. Yes, I think so, Ulrich. There's no time for tea. We'll reach Munich in a few minutes. Oh, time for just one cup. Cake, darling? No, thank you. I'm afraid I must ask you to drop this little comedy. It is very entertaining, but I have certain formalities to attend to. Comedy? What do you mean? Oh, thank you. You are merely pretending to be infatuated with this man. There's no such person as Major Herzog. He's a British agent trying to get you and your father out of Germany. You must be crazy. Ulrich. I don't propose to waste the time of the Gestapo denying it. Thank you. You... you're going to give yourself up? Well, they have lots of proof, Mr. Burmesh. An escort will be waiting in Munich to take you in charge. You can't do this. He's an enemy agent. Weren't you? Didn't you do exactly the same as he's doing? There's a slight but important difference. I wasn't caught. Are you just going to sit there and do nothing? Oh, now, please, don't make a scene. Don't you realize what this means? Yes, I do. That he has a gun and I haven't, and he's got a couple of reserves next door. Who would you take before, Bulldog Drummond? Oh. Can't you be serious even now? I told you this would happen. I told you your scheme was absolutely childish, but you wouldn't listen to me. Why didn't you stay in England instead of coming over here and deliberately throwing your life away, you fool? I have no time to listen to this ridiculous display. Reiner! Reiner! Major on the train. How are we to know which one to arrest? Our men's got a Gestapo officer watching him. <laughs> Who has not these days? Thanks. A little up. A little. Marsden, I'm under instruction from Fifth Army Headquarters to arrest Major Herzog. I fear you will need a stretcher. The prisoner tried to escape and I had to, uh, to deal with it. You will find him in the last compartment, coach 66. What, uh, what transport have you? Two cars. Excellent. Now, this is Herr Axel Bomash from Haska and his daughter. They are in uh, protective custody and I have instructions to take them to General von Kambitz without delay. With your permission, I will use one of the cars. Certainly. I'll leave you to take charge of the prisoner. Will you show me my car? Broder! Take this S officer to the car. Coach 66, you said? The last compartment. Full length on the seat. Sergeant. Get the threats off from the station master and follow me. SS officer and his party in your car. One moment. Is your chauffeur to be trusted? Oh, I think so. He's a very old member of the party. And you're Russian, perhaps. I think I'd better take one of my own men. I'm driving to the place of the greatest secrecy. Very good. You will not be needed, also. Very good, sir. Rumpelmeyer, you will drive. Al Hitler. Al Hitler. Al Hitler. Al Hitler. On quick. Right, man, right. You're not in England. Oh, 
Not much of a life, a secret agent. And it pays bad too, sir. 